small part of a community education project which had a much wider rediscovering the history of the island. But over the years, with changes in staffing, changes in funding, and with the success of the history aspect of the community education programme, the Island History Trust grew and grew, and the other aspects of the project fell away. The island is really a unique area of London because we've been sort of, to a certain extent, cut off with the river around us and the docks just sort of knew when you were leaving the island. You didn't sort of merge into another borough. You knew you were leaving the island, and that made us a self-contained community. Um, I think most of the people here worked on the island. A lot of them found their marriage partners on the island, so we were really, you know, we were self-contained. And I think it developed, a, people developed a great affection for the area. Um, mostly, I think most of the people who went away, went away because of the bombing, the war away, and they made lives in other areas and they stayed, but they still got that feeling for the island. Blythe Burrows is one of the oldest factories on the island. Manufacturers of pigment, which is used in paint and inks, Burroughs has enjoyed more than a hundred years of prosperity. Now, along with many of its old neighbours, it's closing down. Its employees will have to join the hundreds looking to the Enterprise Zone for work, even though many of them have spent all their working lives at Burroughs. We're going to turn photographs from the collection into an exhibition. And to, in order to create the text for the exhibition, I'm asking people in the photographs, and obviously this includes the workers at Burrows, to look, at, look through the photographs and tell me which ones they like best and why they like them best. And whilst they're doing that, they'll obviously be talking about the experience of working, what it feels like, now it's going to close down, and so on. You've been looking at the photos. Can I ask you if there's any particular one that you like very much? Oh, that's my favourite, he was. Every community has this resource which we've drawn on here. Um, in this particular case, it's important because so much other physical evidence of the past, that's to say things, the landscape, so much of that has changed that to people who live here, to people who are born here, it seems that to their childhood memories almost as if they're false because they can no longer see around them any evidence to support their childhood memories. Everybody doing it by hand. You have yeah, to wind it by hand, the gears. Right. And this is really, this is a nice picture. It's really... Oh, it's got older. Yeah. Yeah. Just down in high. Other than that, like, But in bringing together their own resources, their photographs, their memories, their letters, we can reconstruct the past and confirm their childhood memories. And they also, through that activity, they also know, they feel certain that something's being passed on to the next generation. It's not all being lost. In a matter of years, the docks literally just closed. I mean, if you went across the blue, what we call the blue bridge now, the left going off the island, there was probably 20 or 30 ships tied up at any one time there. I mean, if you look across there now, you, you might see a couple of posh launches or something like that, you see nothing else. It's like a miracle, really. And when you think the only reason it's happened is because of money. In time to come, in perhaps 20, 30 years, people will talk of the Isle of Dogs as a place like Florida or something like that. But prior to that, nobody ever knew where the Isle of Dogs were. They used to think it was a joke. If I was talking to anybody when I was abroad, or they say, where did you come from? And you tell them you come from the Isle of Dogs, I think. You know, where's the Isle of Dogs? <laughs> it's so changing that the original island will disappear. But there still be that nucleus of people and their children around, and even if they're not living on the island, they'll be interested in where their people came from. Because people are interested in where they're uh, families came from, aren't they, really? And um, if, if now the History Project doesn't preserve it like they're doing now, and Eve's job is to preserve the history of the island, discover the early history of the island, that will be completely lost. Because in a few years' time, the island is not going to look like the island that anybody knew. On this side of the river, very few houses, and most of the factories had some kind of stevedoring or um, barge unloading. 
so there was quite a lot of people who weren't there. And um, at one o'clock, half past twelve, when the whistles blew, it was almost like a, you know the uh, shipyard, if you like, because everybody came out the gates and was walking down the road and buying their food or that from the local calf. Dockers, tallymen, checkers, stevedores, hatchmen, dumplers, grain porters, timber porters, teamers, tackle men, yard masters, shunters, pilots, tugboatmen, foy boatmen. I think the only thing that's left in the docks is the the cranes that you might see along the side, but nobody could imagine what it was like really. We thought it would be nice to make a tapestry to uh, show the of the island and what the, how the island has been built up. So the tapestry has got the dock scene and it's got the shipbuilding scene because the Great Eastern was built on the island. We've got the girls walking out of MacDougall's flower mills and then we've got just a pub scene and a domestic scene. And now we're starting on another one, uh, but we all do our own individual pictures and they're going to be in chronological order over the history of the island. I mean, I remember in days gone by when my father used to say um, we would sit of an evening, because uh, I had a very nice mum and dad, they really were interested in the family, and we used to ask them about, you know, like Chinatown, because in their day, you know, Limehouse and Limehouse Causeway, the things you read about in books, you know, with the fog and all that, did actually happen, you know? It was true that people on the street with choppers and policemen never walked the streets unless there was two of them, and the local constabulary was always about seven foot tall. You know, this was known and it was a fact. Um, and the th when we were children and we were told things like this, you know, we used to sort of sit there and our eyes used to get bigger and bigger. And I believe that unless we do this now, um, you know, it's just lost. We always call it the front room. That's the room facing the street. It had shutters which were... Come together. And they come along this big conveyor belt and there used to be women each side who were picking out the leaves. Terrible ways. And to think that people were... And they had no protection. We was in the other room and we lived there like that till we was bummed out in cruelty. Different sort. These photographs are of places and buildings that don't exist anymore. They're part of a huge collection that's been assembled almost from nowhere. It belongs to the people of the Isle of Dogs, the Islanders as they call themselves. The Isle of Dogs in London's East End takes its name from the place where, in the Middle Ages, the kings of England kenneled their royal hunting hounds. Over the past two centuries, it's been the heart of London's dockland. But on Friday the 13th of June 1980, it closed. Add to this blow the fact that the island was more heavily bombed in the last war than anywhere else in Britain, and you can recognize the degree to which the past has been physically destroyed. The islanders wanted to recover their history, and they found two historians to help them, not to write a book about them, but to work with them, to restore their past and preserve their memories. Warning went roughly a quarter of an hour ago, and the raiders flew straight away over Woolwich Way, the Thames Estuary, where they went last night, and they were met by a tremendous barrage of anti aircraft. Our baby was about six weeks old. I ran from Ilford Grove with a baby in my arms, with all the burning paper coming down, to St Milk, to the overground shelter, and we sat there all night, children over. It was murder. People talk about like the Blitz and the war, you know, that things was bad, but people sort of, we all sung and, you know, we sat in the dark with the candles and, you know, and everybody was sort of, you know, looking after each other. Really wasn't like that, actually, you know, but people, 
that's how they think it was. <clears throat> uh, and it's the same with your own history, isn't it, to a degree. In terms of work, I think the difficulties of the community today are that the past has been physically destroyed and that the people have a great pride in their past. But the pride and the memories don't tie up with what they see around them. We're working with the people who've experienced the history that we're researching and that's what makes the project very different from other ways of doing history. So economically, it's probably true to say the, the economy, the traditional economy of the island has collapsed. In the last eight years, we've lost over 7,000 jobs out of a total of about 8,500 that was available in, in 1976. We're down to a few hundreds now. Everyone knows that the real history of this place has been a history of, of hard work, of struggle, of depression, and times of high employment, and times of, of high unemployment as well. Yeah, that's a smugly gay old gold. He was an old man when I saw him last. <laughs> <laughs> you knew the Rose girls, then? Oh, Rose, of course I did. Well, I don't know where they are now. Well, um, in fact, we're to some extent restoring those memories in a physical form through the photographs and the memories, the exhibitions, and in general, the work that we do. Oh, I remember a few alleyways like that, didn't you, so? yeah. This place used to look like that. Mm. Might even be there in place for all that. The photograph collection now numbers around about 2,000 prints. And I think the striking thing about it is that when the project began, we had no expectations of making a collection of photographs because we knew that people's homes and many of their possessions had been lost or destroyed in the Blitz. And it wasn't until the project had been for about 12 months that the first photograph was brought in and then that became a trickle which has since become a flood and we're still receiving old photographs at the rate of perhaps 40 a month. We put the whole photograph collection out on display. There's room for over 100 people to come along. She's just signed, the mall's just signed. 98. Well, she's not as old as, uh, there's only one old one, that's Ivy Foster's mother. She was 100, I think she was 104 when she died. She lived on the island. The collection is displayed on tables and people just come in and sit down and start looking through the collection in a very haphazard sort of way. And then they find amongst the photographs people that they know, scenes that they even sometimes photographs of themselves. Well, you're in there. That was me. I can't think of her name. She lived down um, Stafford Street. That was Mabel Shepherd. People play quite an active part in compiling the information that the Island History Project is collecting. Everybody can contribute to it. Two generations of my family were born on the island and grandparents. And um, so we got involved because it's, you know, there's that interest and it's sort of keeping the family history alive, really. And I always had to have a bit of lace shine. Showing. Other, even in that one, you see, that's... You're like your Jill there. Am I? Yeah, I yeah. think so. I'm learning all the time how my family lived and where they worked and um, the places in which they worked, you know, learning about missions and all that sort of thing where they lived. It's a challenge in the sense that one has to always think of new ways of putting over history uh, in a way that is accessible to people and not have it simply locked away in archives or merely told uh, in the sense of academic journals or something like that. And the challenge is to make pictures actually speak for themselves um, and let the community see the variety uh, of the history that's actually all around people. Cuba Street, when the old man used to come around with his barrack. Right? Cuba Street, yeah, but the, the old man, we went to the old man. Have a look at this.
remember, no Yeah, that's, that's old old Ike. Right? That's, that's and that's... Uh, that's me dad. That's their dad. Yeah, I know, he's took it apart, right? Oh, yeah, so I'll give both of them. I'll give, but I'll give um, up to half a dozen, I suppose. One when I was a boy scout in the Roman Catholic oh, procession around yeah. the Isle of Dogs. Uh, he paid for all our uniforms. Uh, we had to pay, repay him sixpence a week back. He was uh, uh, Howard. His name was Howard. And uh, he was a cousin of the Duke of Norfolk. And I think it's spreading right on the field all the time. We had a chap come here the other, well, a few weeks ago now. And it was his grandfather. He'd been going through his. He goes through the papers and found out his grandfather was what used to play for Millwall, the old Millwall. And he had heard that um, there's photos of the old Millwall team in here. Went to Limehouse Nick, found out where the ferry house was because he didn't know. He'd come down here and when he'd see the photo, he was world shocked. It was the first time he'd ever seen a photo of his grandfather. It's been done without without romanticising it, without without the sort of nostalgia and, and without really being sentimental. What's happened here is that it, there's two historians that have actually come in that have, that have actually served the community. So it's, it is very much the community view of, of their history, of our own history. And, and that's quite important because people feel that, you know, that out of that pride, which isn't overplaced and it's not overblown, and, and I dare say in other parts of the country there is individual pride in. in but, but on the island, it's, it's particular because people have a pride and a sense of place in a place to them which is special. And that's what the History Project has, has identified. This map's a bit later, and we can see on it that there are the streets of Millwall and also the streets of Cubitt Town. It's actually 1862, so um, there's quite a bit of development by then. And then this map shows the island in its modern Oh yeah, that's it. That's mum with all the grandchildren, no? Oh, that's good. Oh. That's the other one. Yeah. You're in this one. This is at a wedding. You know what they've done? Tricia. Look. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey. Hey, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's my mother. This is my daughter. This is her daughter. And this daughter there is uh, my granddaughter there. Right? Now, and these are her children. So you can see that how the generation's gone on. There's very much a sense of contrib contributing to an archive which is going to be of value in the future and of sharing memories as well, you know, helping other people to remember and passing those memories on to the next generation. There's vast changes going on and, and all the familiar landmarks have been demolished and disappeared, and the place is changing. The thing that doesn't change is the people. And and what even Bernard have done in, in the history project, they've given the people the, the their sense of place. And in the future, it will show what it was really like. And that's I, I think that's the real what it was really like. Memories of the Isle of Dogs.
Gallery in East London. Mrs. Val Foden will be meeting up with a group of her former pupils.